The Asarian's opponent, Bong Ku, is 44 years of age. She's a celebrated bowler, winner of the 1979 World Cup. She's also competed in all 12 Asian Masters for a total of 13 gold medals and the 1986 World Bowler of the Year. She has a high game of 299. So Bong Ku then commences proceedings. She's come out of retirement. And that's the perfect start. That certainly is. And the much younger now, Ariane Sardinia Valdez, first up. And a very nasty split. That's exactly the start you don't want. So what approach here for the spare? Well, this, this spare here is pretty much impossible. It's very rarely picked up. Basically, as Ariane's done there, you just go for one just to cover it. Pin four counts so again. It's just one game. One pin might decide the winner. And if you go for it and miss it, it could cost you. Bonku is just fantastic. A real stylist, too. Plenty of ballet in that delivery. She is just uh, a great, great player. She's, she's one of the best women players in the world ever. I think even Ariane won't mind losing if she does. She's just such a great player. Three in a row. What a start. And she can really go for break because she has the advantage of, if she does lose, she does have that ripper charge. Exactly. Great shot. The ball's perfect. Just takes ten straight, ten in the pit. That's a perfect strike. As much as I'm sure she'd love to win, um, there will certainly be no regrets if she loses. I'm sure you'll see that at the end. Uh, it'll be, I think it'll be very emotional for both. Well, still plenty of work to do there. You'll see there you've got the sleeper pin behind the, uh, the two pin, so the ball's got to come in. Hit the two pin sufficiently so that the ball takes the back pin. Difficult to spare. You don't want to be leaving these. Well, that Very certainly well keeps up. her hopes alive, doesn't it? Certainly does. Like she's not out of the match by any means. Not at all. She's looking for four in a row. I'm sure uh, with those young children there, there's a lot of aspiring bon coups. She's but never bowled a, a perfect game. Maybe she's today. on the road here. Yes. There's no stopping her. As I said, you can see the determination in her face. People down there helping her, fixing her, trying to keep her calm, trying to keep her loose. You'll see here the poor perfect strike. Ten in the pit, straight through. Never looks like doing anything else but getting ten. I wouldn't like to be bowling Bonku. But uh, I'm sure she'll do a country proud. She's got a silver medal here. And she'll be very proud of that. She's looking for a double. Well, there it is again, as we saw with, uh, in the match with Sue. She left that uh, stubborn seven pit a couple of times and she's trying the same shot again. It's getting to the stage where if Bonku gets three or four more strikes, she can stop. But what a performance. Good spare, good solid spare. One good thing about the Filipinos and one thing that's impressed me over the many years that I've uh, 
bowled myself is the way they get through the ball. They have great extension through the ball, keeps the ball on line there. They get down at the foul line, get right through the ball all the time. Just a very nice little touch there. Ariana, she came off, really gave a little pump up to her opponent, Bonku, and said, keep going. As I said, the Philippines really play it as a team sport. To them, if one wins, they all win. And I think you'll see that at the end, no matter which who wins. She's looking for six strikes in a row here. Yeah. Yes. Well, this really is sensational bowling from Bonku, the 44-year-old bowling consultant from Manila. She's really treating the large crowd here to some spectacular results. She needs uh, six more in a row to get that perfect game. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Oh. Seven strikes in succession for Bong Ku. It must be those soothing hands at the back. Seventh frame for Ariane and leaving that ten pin. There we have a picture of Irene, who's, who is actually Bong Ku's niece. So, uh, Irene was a member of the team. She just missed out on making the finals. I think right about now the match is very lost. So she, it's, it's a bad position to be in, but she'll go out. There's only a, a coat of varnish in that one. And that's just a fantastic strike there from Marianne. That's what she's been doing all through the tournament. Look at this. It'll be... Come on, Bong, let's go. Let's do it. She'll be urging her on just as much. She wants her to do it. She wants her to bowl a, a 300. She wants her to bowl a very big game. She wants her eighth strike in a row here. After that, she'll have four to go. Two-thirds of the way there. These are really important frames, the eighth and ninth. I found to be the most difficult. She got it? Oh! oh no. So her grand run comes to an end. An auspicious end too, because this is a horror split. Yes, yeah, she'll just, just go for two and uh, think what a horrible shot she threw. She knows she's won the match and, and that's what she wanted to do anyway. Um, to shoot a 300 on television would have just been a dream. It's only been done a handful of times in the history of the game. So, But to just go out now and... <laughs> she's just really happy. She just wanted to be a winner. Yeah, seven, seven strikes in an open frame. Yes. Can she come back now with a, a run of strikes to finish? Just see here with her extension. She gets right through the ball. <laughs> but this is... Ariane Sedenia Valdez. Yes. Oh. Let's see what she can do. Let's see if she can get up there now and, and keep striking. Also give Bonku a bit of an incentive to uh, keep striking as well and keep up with the teammate. Yep. She, she certainly has relaxed. And uh, she's really enjoying the occasion, I think, especially for the countrywoman, Bonku Garcia. She pumped herself up for that two versus three playoff. Just won that game and then had to come in against Bonku and had an open frame to start. That's right. It is very difficult. You, you get out there and you know you can't lose the first match. Uh, so you pump yourself up, you get, you get really tense, excited, you want to win, you want to do really well. So you win that, and that's great, but then you look, turn around and think, my God, now I've got to beat this woman twice, who has uh, just blown the pins apart all day, and is, is her idol. Like, to beat her twice is very difficult. With the repercharge, charge, the benefit of having uh, finished top seed, top qualifier after the uh, match play, is very important, it gives a big advantage. I suppose you can liken it to, uh, to tennis. You know, you have a very long set, hard court. One person gets the edge and wins the set. And then often in the next set, the opponent 
runs through very quickly. Yes, well, they, um, it's certainly certainly the case. Also, you know, they often say in Wimbledon, if they have a grueling five set of the day before or their last match and then they come out, come out, they usually die because they've put everything into that to get there and the, they just can't lift themselves for the next match. I think John McEnroe would agree with you. There. I'm sure. <laughs> Can she finish it off? No. <laughs> As she says, oops again. So she has two opportunities here, but it's just an oops. Let's go. Ariane's finished 192. And Bonfu's finished with 231. So there she is, a triumphant winning note as Bonku bows out of international bowling. She is the 1992 Asian Masters champion and wonderful support for this great champion. Well, I would have to say that wasn't a bad effort by a 44-year-old grandmother. What a start, Bonku. Seven strikes in a row. Uh, I just really wanted to win it, I guess. It was pure determination, I guess. You were really pumped up when I spoke to you before the match, and you had great support here. What was the significance of it all, though? Well, uh, it was because um, the last Asian FIQ I've won, the last Masters I've won was in 72. It makes it a 20-year anniversary, right? Uh, and this being my 12th FIQ, never missed a single one, and my 14th goal, I think that means a lot to me. And coming out of retirement, I noticed uh, you had a bit of tendonitis and you took up Chinese painting. Uh, yes, for therapy. I really felt bad when I could not bowl anymore. So I took up Chinese painting. I have a couple of paintings, though. <laughs> Was that the, the secret to getting back to full health? Uh, I think so. It kept my mind going. And I had, uh, I was practic pra practicing in my mind, though. <laughs> Congratulations. You're definitely retiring. Uh, I think so, unless my country forced me to bowl again. But I really want to, to retire already and go, probably go more into the organization.